live from Center City in Philadelphia, this is Fox 29 News at 11. We continue to stay on top of breaking news. Six officers shot and miraculously they all survived and they are all out of the hospital. I'm Jason Martinez and I'm Shana Humphreys. This story is still developing right now, but here's what we know. Police arrived on the 3700 block of North 15th Street to serve a warrant this afternoon. They were met by a barrage of bullets. Tonight we know six officers were shot and they are all OK and out of the hospital already. The suspect is still barricaded in that home, but two police officers and others who had been held in the home, they are also out safe. Police are trying to make contact with that man to convince him to surrender. And we have team coverage. Our Fox 29 crew is covering this story from all angles from the very beginning here tonight. Let's start with Fox 29's Chris O'Connell live at the scene in North Philadelphia. What's the latest there, Chris? Well, Jason, a chaotic, a tense and violent day still continues as an armed suspect still holds police at bay now going on its seventh hour. We do have some good news to report. The two police officers who were inside that home on the 3700 block of North 15th Street have been rescued safely. They are out tonight. Another piece of good news, all six of those police officers who were shot miraculously walked out of the hospital tonight. Take a look at some video of the ha what happened just shortly after 430. That's when this thing all started when the Philadelphia Police Strike Force unit were serving a warrant on the North 15th Street home. The gunman started shooting from his window. Neighbor tells me she heard over 100 rounds fired. We heard several rounds of gunfire ourselves from a block and a half away. Those six police officers injured in the shooting, none of them with life threatening injuries. One of them was grazed in the head, another in the arm, the hand, the legs. Commissioner Richard Ross says negotiations continue tonight by way of bullhorn and telephone in all hopes that this ends with a peaceful surrender. Once we get him out, we will have a very, very expansive um, crime scene that we will be at for hours and hours, as you can clearly see. It's clearly not the most optimal circumstance, but obviously officers did return fire initially. Um, and uh, there, there were different bouts of fires he was firing uh, throughout the course of this uh, encounter. Once again, that man still held up in that home on North 15th Street. Uh, we can tell you that police have the area obviously cordoned off a two block perimeter. Many people still can't get back into their homes. They left work this morning, came home to a crime scene outside. Uh, we can also tell you President Trump and Pennsylvania Governor Tom Wolf have also chimed in offering their sympathies to the police officers. Once again, all six walking out of the hospital tonight as this standoff continues into the night. Incredibly fortunate. Thank you very much, Chris. Let's go out to our Sean Ed Wilson now. She's not far from where Chris is uh, at 15th and Erie. Well, so Shana, we've been talking all evening about crowd control and police asking neighbors to stay in the house for safety reasons. But, you know, it's not just people out here wanting to see how this is going to unfold and what's going on. You have some people who just have not been able to get home all evening long. There's a young man out here right now with a baby. He's been out here in the rain trying to get to his house, which is just a few feet away from where the street is blocked off. Uh, police telling him he can't go there right now. Um, so again, as we take a look at the scene back here, we can see it's still very active. Police have lit up the area. We are actually back where we were earlier this evening before we were moved back to the end of uh, the block here and you can see SWAT police cars, a fire truck still on scene here as they work to resolve the situation. This is very much a day that has affected this neighborhood tremendously. Uh, again, as I said, people not have not been able to get back home. People just remembering the gunshots and everything they heard as this unfolded series and series of gunshots all evening long. We want to go ahead and hear from a man who we spoke to earlier today about what he heard as he was making his way around the neighborhood. You heard several gunshots, and then you seen cops coming down the side street that's north of Venango. They were running off the block telling everybody to go back, and then you saw a SWAT come in, and then after SWAT came in, you heard the sound like the Armageddon siren, and then that's when they started yellow taping off the block. You and, can hear that sound going oh yeah. throughout North Philly. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. That's when everybody went back because all these streets was full of people but that's when like people went inside that building right here people went inside the church 
because the cops were saying you're safer either blocks away or inside. Talking about police officers trying to keep people out on the street safe here. What is the feeling you get being out here as we hear that we've had several of our police officers shot here in the city and that this is still very much unfolding? Um, you just got to, um, I guess, stay alert, stay aware. I mean, with the mass shootings going on and, and now you got this, you just always got to be safe here and aware of your surroundings. And as you've been watching here uh, live all evening long, still, of course, a very high police presence in this area right now. We're looking at police officers uh, manning this area where residents are being blocked off from the intersection uh, by caution tape. And again, as we mentioned, many of them have not been able to get home all evening long. Um, some of them live just where the police officers are standing and have not been able to get home and don't know when they will be able to. So again, still a very fluid situation, and we're on top of it until it ends. Back yeah. to you. All right, Sean Ed Wilson there live in the neighborhood where this is going on. And another active place was Temple University Hospital. And that's where our Fox 39 reporter Jennifer Joyce has been all day. And we've heard from the com police commissioner there, the mayor, lots of activity at that hospital tonight, Jennifer. Yeah, and you know what, it's calmed down tremendously, but what we've been hearing uh, from Mayor Kenny, from obviously Richard Ross, the commissioner of the Philadelphia Police Department, is not only how good these Philadelphia police officers are at their job, but how incredibly brave they are as well. You know, Richard Ross, he detailed um, that it was a SWAT team who was able to get the two Philadelphia police officers who were um, held up inside of this building with the suspect out without the suspect even knowing. Um, and tonight we have been able to give you the good news that all six of the police officers who were shot today have been released from the hospital. Let's take a look at some of that video. You can see uh, one officer, the first one, he has bandages on his arm, standing by as members of the police force salute him. Uh, the second officer is the one that had the graze wound to his head. Um, and as we watch this video, it was important for Mayor Jim Kenney to make a political mention and to bring up gun control, saying that these officers don't deserve this. They don't deserve to be fired at repeatedly. They need our help, and it needs to come from state and federal government. But our officers need help. They need help. They need help with gun control. They need help with keeping these weapons out of these people's hands. I mean, I told you earlier, the two little boys that were, the officer had his head grazed uh, just a little bit more, and those two little boys will grow up and out with their dad. Because some, because this government, uh, both on the federal and state level, don't want to do anything about getting these guns off the streets and getting them out of the hands of criminals. So that's a conversation that I'm sure will be coming up again and again over the next several days and several weeks and several months. And who knows, maybe we uh, could potentially see movement. Uh, so we'll take it one day at a time. Um, but the other thing that we were hearing tonight from John McNesby, that somebody upstairs, these are his words, somebody upstairs was looking down at these six officers because it is amazing that all six have already been released and were able to go home to their families. Back to you guys. Guardian Angel, it was a miracle tonight. Jennifer Joyce, thank you very much. We want to bring in Fox 29's Dave Schratweiser now live on the phone. Dave, you and your many law enforcement sources were key in our coverage of this awful situation today. What are you learning tonight? Well, Shana, let's give you a little bit of an update if we can. Uh, from what I'm being told by police sources tonight on the scene, the suspect is a 35-year-old man who has uh, six prior arrests, including one back in March, and a case that was uh, possession with intent to distribute narcotics that was no pros by the district attorney's office. We don't know why that is. There were other charges that I believe are proceeding to court in that case, but he has six prior arrests from what we're being told. We're not naming him at this point. He has not been arrested and charged officially, so we won't do that at this point. But let me also tell you that according to police officers who were on the scene, they believe he's armed with an AK-47 style weapon and possibly several handguns just from the rounds that were fired at police. You heard Police Commissioner Ross early in the evening say that several of those rounds stuck struck an armored personnel carrier used by SWAT that he fired on that vehicle and uh, did some damage from what I'm being told. But again, I'm also told that he stacked furniture in front of entrances to the home so to prevent police from getting into the house. Again, two police officers were rescued 
from a second floor window extricated from there along with two prisoners. I spoke to someone who spoke to those two officers directly, told me they came out, they were in good shape, they were in good condition, and they gave the kind of the thumbs up, they were all good. And that's great news to hear. The two prisoners were also safe. Again, that suspect, 35 years old, is still in the home as we speak, may still be armed with those kind of weapons I already spoke about. Don't know how much ammunition he has. Police have spoken to him. They continue to speak to him. The obvious end they want here is for him to come out and surrender, surrender those weapons. You heard the commissioner also talk about what a gigantic crime scene this will be because he fired shots out the window at police in the building. It's police officers on the second floor. Police returned fire, so there'll be shell casings and ballistic uh, evidence to collect at that scene. The detective work is just starting here now. They will be interviewing the police officers inside, the prisoners and others. But again, the primary concern right now is to get this guy out without any more shooting. I know Police Commissioner Ross very, very well, and I can tell you that he probably does not want to see any more gunfire if it can be prevented. And they will make every attempt they can to get this guy out safely and to prosecute him to the full extent. And again, gigantic crime scene for them to process tonight. But uh, uh, what a night for Philadelphia police that all six officers could return home. A little perspective historically, if I can. The last time something like this happened was in 1970, when seven police officers were shot over a weekend period in multiple incidents. One of those officers was killed, Sergeant Frank Von Kahn. That was back August 30th. 1970, a good friend of mine was also shot. Tommy Gibbons, who was a highway patrol officer at the time, was shot multiple times. He was forced to retire from the department because of his injuries. He became a crime reporter for the Philadelphia Inquirer and sadly passed away a couple of years ago. But that was the last time something like this, this big, almost 50 years ago, happened in Philadelphia. As you well know, we lost a number of officers about 10 years ago, uh, seven or eight in a short All period right. of time. So Dave Schratweiser, I hate to cut in here. We do have to take a break right. in a moment, but your experience, your deep contacts within the law enforcement community, key in giving our, our mm -hmm. viewers answers today throughout this event. So thank you very much, Dave. And we'll thank be right you. back here on Fox 29. Yeah, you, you can't miss that sound. Dozens, if not hundreds of gunshots were fired into the streets of the Nicetown Tioga neighborhood, a chaotic scene that went on for hours on end this afternoon into tonight. And what you're about to hear is powerful. As that shooting was unfolding, dispatchers crying out for backup all over the radio. And you can hear immediately in the tone of the dispatcher's voice that this was an awful, awful scenario. Hey, we got several shots, officers. We got an officer down. They're still getting shot. Shots fired. I need, I need long gun SWAT 3715 North 15th. It's just the officer. Please buy radio. We have an officer shot, and they're, built, they're still being shot at. They're saying the shooter's in the kitchen. We got an officer down. Radio, I want your to shut down right now. You can hear that dispatcher just trying to relay the magnitude of the situation to all of the other officers saying they need long guns. They need a SWAT team because those officers were still being shot at. And the response was just jaw dropping from that spot on. You heard that one officer begging for Erie Avenue to be shut down immediately, which it was. Let's get over to Fox 29's Dawn Timoney. She's live at Einstein Hospital where some of those officers were taken tonight. Dawn. Well, Jason, the good news is that the three officers who were the three of the six officers who were shot, who were brought here to Einstein Medical Center, have all been released. All six officers home tonight with their families. So really a miracle. But as we were coming here tonight, we were right behind the mayor as his uh, entourage and their SUVs were flying into Einstein Medical Center. This is video right now of the mayor as he left the hospital probably an hour and a half later. He spent a considerable amount of time with the officers who were shot here. At Einstein Medical, and there was a steady stream of police vehicles with their sirens flashing and lights on pouring into the hospital all afternoon long to check on their colleagues. And again, the good news is that all six of them, by the grace of God, have been released from the hospital. Uh, I did speak to a woman as we were 
out here live all afternoon. Her father was one of those police officers in North Philadelphia in the middle of it all, and she did not know that. She was so worried for him. He was obviously not answering his phone, but she did reach out to me tonight to tell me that she has been in contact with her father and that he is okay, and she, like everyone else, is praying for the Philadelphia Police Department tonight. Back to you guys. So back to the breaking news that we've been following all day long. Six officers shot in North Philadelphia today. All of them not only survived, but are already out of the hospital tonight. This all started when narcotics officers arrived on the 3700 block of North 15th Street to serve a warrant. They were met with a firestorm of gunfire. That suspect still barricaded in the home right now, but the two officers who were inside with him, they are now safely out. Police are still trying to get into contact with the gunman to get him to surrender. Yeah, and we're still, of course, going to be waiting to see what happens there. You've got that suspect inside. The person who caused this mayhem today through the streets of Philadelphia is still there barricaded. And so this situation, although we are breathing a sigh of relief for the officer's safety, all six of them, actually eight of them, if you count the two who are barricaded inside, although they are safe, uh, this situation is not over yet. So we're staying on top of it here at Fox 29. And you can get all of the breaking news updates online uh, and on Good Day Philadelphia, which starts at 4 a.m. But make sure you're following online mm -hmm. and on all those apps as well. Have a great night. Jason Martinez here along with Shayna Humphreys here after midnight and we are getting reports. We just seen the suspect responsible uh, for shooting six officers surrender here in North Philadelphia. Our cameras on the scene shaking. It's an active situation here. It appears that tear gas or something like it has been used. Uh, we heard an update from our Chris O'Connell maybe 20 minutes ago who had been speaking with the gunman's attorney. He had actually had an attorney he was in contact with saying uh, he was trying to convince this person to surrender surrender and it appears he just did. We do have some crews on the scene right now. It looks like Seanette might be ready for us. Yeah, we were using her camera to get you a, a picture of that suspect surrendering. We just saw it minutes ago with him coming up out with his hands up and he was taken into custody right there back. Perhaps we are intentionally uh, pulling away just to not show anything, but uh, right where you can see the light shining is where he came up with his hands up. And, and as you can see, we're about a block and a half to two blocks away uh, from this area. So our reporter, Seanette Wilson, uh, is there live. Are we able to talk to Seanette here or is this situation uh, too fluid to talk to her? Seanette, can you, you hear me, Jason? Yes, go for it. Okay, so we're, we're hearing exactly, your narrative was exactly right. If you guys are watching the, the shot back there, the live picture, uh, we just heard a series of shots. We saw smoke emerge from the house, and from our camera point, we could see uh, what appears to have been the suspect coming out of the house. Prior to that, we were hearing uh, police officers, presumably the negotiators, saying, put your hands up, come out. So we were hearing the conversation back and forth, doing a countdown, telling him to put his hands on his uh, head, and come, or hands up and come out. And uh, hopefully you guys were able to see that live picture of it happening just moments ago as we have been standing out here for for, for, for minutes waiting for this to happen. We had received word that uh, perhaps a lawyer was there at the house uh, hoping to uh, come out with the suspect. Again, I'm at ground level. We raised our camera up so we could get a shot here, so I'm not exactly sure of the details, but I can tell you that we did hear them give the warning to come out with your hands up, and that is exactly what happened. After a very, very long day, six police officers shot. Uh, prayers went up for them tonight, as you can imagine, that they are all okay, but what a night here in our city as the community also out here watching this unfold, listening to those sounds again, seeing the smoke emerge from the house and then the suspect coming out. So that's what we have here. We see police vehicles moving around at the intersection here just uh, within that intersection of Erie and 15th, uh, just beyond that point where you can maybe see uh, the police vehicle moving away is where we saw the smoke emerge. Um, and, and there was a lot of chatter from people standing out here where we are, um, who it sounds like they may be familiar or know of the suspect. And they, we were hearing people concerned about what was going to happen. Um, and, and as you just saw moments ago, he has come out. He has surrendered. Absolutely. The ending we were hoping we would see since this all first started nearly eight hours ago at this point. Uh, no further, no, no more people have been shot uh, outside of those six officers who were shot, all of them only injured and okay. They were all released from the hospitals they were in earlier tonight. Uh, two other officers were 
were holed up in that house with the suspect. They were able to be evacuated as well. And I understand we do have some video of the suspect right now. Yeah, there he is, hands up, stepping outside, those spotlights on him after that uh, apparent tear gas was yeah, fired. The best possible case scenario has happened there. This is the first look at him there with his hands up. We heard Seanette say shots fired. That might have been flashbangs. It could have been tear gas. Uh, yeah. who, who knows at this point? But as he's coming up, he seems to be unarmed in that moment. Uh, and then Yvette, there were times where we'd see smoke, and you can kind of see some smoldering uh, uh, smoke there. I don't know if that's tear gas or a flashbang result, but as you see, that is the result we all wanted after hours of waiting and praying for a safe and conclusion. Are you, you hear that? That's that could be uh, tear gas being deployed mm -hmm. in that that particular area as they had that light flashed. Our, our Chris O'Connell had reported that he was talking to his lawyer. His lawyer was telling him to surrender peacefully, and perhaps his lawyer was able to get through to him. That's how smoky and, 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 and bad it got for him. Perhaps that's why he gave himself up, just couldn't handle the tear gas any longer. When you think about how long this went on and how many shots were fired, how many of those officers were injured, the fact that nobody else was injured more seriously or killed, and the fact that this man is being taken into custody alive and presumably we'll be able to find out more about what led up to this, why he decided to, to do what he did today. Uh, but again, it's just incredible that those six officers already back home with their families tonight. The two that were trapped inside the home with this armed man, they were able to escape as well as some other uh, people who were in custody, some mm -hmm. prisoners who were also holed up in that home. But this is just the best possible outcome. Yeah, and that man will face uh, all the charges you can think of that he's responsible for today. As far as the people in this neighborhood, they will soon be allowed to return to their homes after waiting uh, for hours since about 4 o'clock this afternoon, 4.30 this afternoon when this all began. And here we are after midnight. Many people haven't been able to return home, but now uh, I would presume that officers will then take down some of that caution tape now that this seems to be yeah. uh, given the all clear uh, soon enough. Really brought North Philly to a standstill, a, a pretty large scene we were dealing with for a good portion of the time today. And people all over the country really uh, watching this very closely mm -hmm. all night long from from the president on down lawmakers all over the place. Uh, everybody's just hearts and thoughts were with the Philadelphia Police Department as this was unfolding yeah, today. And just you know, here six officers shot one grazed in the head another uh, several other officers shot in, in areas that were you know a hand a leg officers all released from the hospital already and, and as you said maybe home with their families already tonight so a miraculous evening for this Philadelphia Police Department a, a great uh, turnout and outcome for the city of Philadelphia and this man is in custody we're gonna of course continue to follow what happens with him what his motive was what started this and of course those are officers who serve that narcotics warrant to start this whole thing they will have a story to tell and and you wonder if they will want to share that story one day and we of course expect a big response from from local and state and federal leaders and uh, law enforcement officials as well. We already heard uh, Philadelphia Mayor Jim Kenney talking about how angry he mm -hmm. was about the kind of weaponry that this man had access to and was able to just keep firing bullet after bullet over a span of several hours, um, injuring several officers. It could have been and, and really should have been when you consider how much, how many bullets were fired. It, it's just mind-boggling yeah, to think is. that nobody was hurt worse. Yeah, and we, we still have to kind of find out exactly how those two officers who were barricaded in that home, how they managed to escape and sort of how all that came about. It took hours for this to happen, and that happened about uh, just before 10 o'clock tonight, about 945, when the first reports came out that those officers who were barricaded in there for hours uh, were able to safely escape, but that still left an hours-long standoff in this home with this suspect here and police who were patiently, patiently tried to talk to this man, tried to talk to him, some sense into him, give him an opportunity to, to say whatever he needed to say. And, and there were times where uh, our reporters on the scene just heard gunfire, an yeah. automatic gunfire, which we later found was an AK-47 rifle, automatic rounds being fired all over the place. Um, those last shots happened several hours ago, and, and we did, never heard them again, thank God. 
As we uh, see now, the safe surrender of this suspect, 35 years old, has a rap sheet, according to our Dave Schratreiser. Uh, and, uh, and here he is now. He's going to face... You, you name it, he's going to face that charge. Yeah, again, our Dave Schratweiser, his many law enforcement contacts telling him tonight this man was firing an AK style weapon, possibly had handguns as well. A lot of ammunition, as we heard as the day went on. Uh, six prior arrests, according to our Dave Schratweiser, a 35 year old suspect here, but uh, I think this could have ended a, a lot of different way. Could've. I think a lot of people expected it to, but this really is the best possible outcome after the day that police department has had. Yeah, a, a night that many of us will not forget. Six Philadelphia police officers shot. Six Philadelphia police officers are going to be just fine and are already out of the hospital with their families where they belong. Yeah, this won't. The story is is wrapping up here. The live situation is, is wrapping up. Uh, Everything's going to be okay there in that Tioga neighborhood, but as we said, there will be so many angles to look at this in the coming days. Make sure you keep it here on Fox 29. Our team on Good Day Philadelphia starting at 4 a.m. will have the very latest. Um, you can also follow us on our website, fox29.com, all of those social media pages. There will be a lot more to come on this momentous yeah. day. Well, for, for Shana, I'm Jason. Thanks for watching, and uh, say your prayers tonight. And Definitely tune into Fox 29 News at 4 a.m. Good day, Philadelphia. Have a good morning.